All right, how do we respond to an IRS proposed amount due notice or CP2000 notice once we've blown the deadline? My name's Anthony Fontana, I'm a CPA, and I'm gonna let you know how we get this done. I go through a live example of where we actually did blow the deadline here. I'm gonna go through all the notices received and the correspondence we had sent out. So if you're in a scenario like this, need to learn how to respond to the IRS, uh, you can take a look at kind of what I did and use that for yourself. Bottom line is the way to get it done is you respond to the original notice as if you were on time and they will still process your response. In this specific example, the taxpayer forgot to report a home sale. So we go through all the specifics on that. So if, you know, again, if that is something that has happened to you, this video will be very helpful. Stay tuned. If you want me to help you out with your specific case, please use the link in the description below to schedule an appointment. All right, so I'm gonna start off with the timeline of how this whole thing shook out. Okay, so the original CP2000 proposed amount due notice, right, November of 2020, they got that. Then they got the 3219, which was this uh, notice of deficiency, right? They assessed the tax. Um, and then they contacted me, look at that. That should be 22, almost a year later after that. They contacted me. We then sent a response out, and then we got an answer just recently in August of 22 from the IRS. So here are the actual notices that we did receive, right? You'll see CP2000. We got it November of 22. This massive bill here that they got, okay? Um, and then they subsequently got this, shoot, here we go, uh, the 3219A, again, 2018 tax year in March of 21. There's our, you know, big tax bill here. And on this one, uh, we see that there it is, right? That big real estate sale that they did not report on their original return. So there was a small interest that's essentially immaterial, but you know, this is where the bulk of that tax is coming from. So we had to respond to that. So how did we do this? Well, in this specific case, this was their primary home. So this is rather easy to get done. Um, they did purchase it a long time ago. So to get records from back when they purchased it was a little difficult, but nonetheless, for the most part, for tax purposes, was pretty straight forward, okay? Um, but again, we blew, right, last date to petition, we blew these deadlines big time, okay? Um, and then this one probably has like, look at that, 2020, uh, yeah, December 30th, 2020 to respond by. We didn't we didn't get that done, okay? Um, we responded, look at that, January of 2022, okay? Here's my letter. Uh, but nonetheless, how do we respond to these late? Regardless if you have like a home sale or not, like maybe you have capital gains you didn't report or something else, there's, there's some other issue that you got the CP2000 for. Um, you want to respond as if you're responding to this original uh, CP 2000. So if you have that, um, that's what you want to do here. Okay. And, and really what, what it is, is the response needs to go out to that address there. So if you don't have your original CP 2000, you could always use that, that, well, not always, cause they may change that, uh, that address. And also the address is based on kind of where you live, but it should be, they should be able to process this thing. Um, they also have like a fax number too. Um, that's where we sent it, but you'll see it's the same address there right? Yes, it is. Um, and we actually, I generally advise to fax these in because it, it just, it gets done a lot faster than, you know, going through snail mail. And what is the fax? Okay. So here's the fax that we sent this to right here. So if you don't have the fax, 877-477-0967, but you'll see, right? If you disagree, send it to this address. It's the same address that's up on top here. Okay, that's how we respond to a CP2000 notice late. That's how we do it. We just send it to the original place, which is again, same place here. All right, so for our response, this is my I sent essentially like a general template letter that I use here. Um, but you know, you wanna spell out the specifics up on top in terms of like, you know, your case, right? This is like fill in your name. This is the easy stuff. You know, what's your name, taxpayer, social security number. These AUR control numbers also do kind of help locate where these came from, but you'll see these, they, they come from the notices. If you don't have them, it's not the end of the world, but it does help 
if you do, um, there were two different AUR control numbers that I also put in there. It just helps, again, help them track this case. But tax year and what is the subject of this thing? You know, and then this is what we're, we're putting on here. You know, taxpayer doesn't agree with the proposed changes for that. Um, and we essentially just say that, you know, we forgot to put this on. That's what this first part is saying. And we forgot, more importantly, for this home sale, the primary home sale exclusion. The IRS allows you to exclude up to 250000 of the gain from the home sale if you're single and you live there for two out of the last five years before you sell or up to 500000 if you're married, filing jointly. So they're married, filing jointly. We're trying to qualify for this five hundred thousand, um, and you know we say essentially that you know they lived there from ninety three until twenty eighteen when this thing was sold, so way over that two year requirement. Um, and then here are all the documents to kind of back this up. We got property tax records from the county here to show that hey, you know we purchased this, and you know what day did we purchase it? How much did we buy it for? Um, and then the the closing statement, and then we I filled out some forms for them to send with this as well, essentially as if this these should have gone on the original return. So the Schedule D, the eighty nine forty nine, the home sale worksheet, those would go on original return if we filed this thing properly. So I would do that as well. I don't know if that's a hundred percent required to do that to send this, but. Uh, for me, it's the less questions asked by the IRS, the better. So the more work you can do, the less that they need to do, um, the easier that they'll make this change for you. Um, so here we go. And then I also attached a copy of the notices to this just in case they can't track down this case because it is, again, an older case. So that's essentially what we did. And then I just say, hey, please, you know, make this thing to a zero now since none of this should, should be taxed. All right. And so this is kind of, this is the essentially cover sheet that I sent over and then I sent over, okay, a copy of the notices and here's that uh, property tax records, right? What they bought the home for here back in 93 and then what they sold it for here, right? In 2018, okay. And then our, you know, our, our schedules that we filled out, Schedule D, right? We bought it for 198. We sold it for six seventy five, but we we qualify for that five hundred thousand exclusion, so there should be zero tax, zero income here. All right, eighty nine forty nine. Also, there it is. Okay, and then the home sale worksheet, which kind of gets into a little bit more details. We put some selling expenses to get that gain a little bit lower, but I really didn't even need to do this. Um, I could have just put the original purchase price, sales price. It was under 500,000 and that would have qualified, but nonetheless, I did do it and there was the gain on the home. Um, and you know, I essentially just fill this thing out again, as if this were to go on an original return, but you'll see we qualify for that 500,000 exclusion, maximum exclusion, right? Um, and I sent this thing off and in the meantime, so this was, again, this was sent off in January of 22. Um, and then in the meantime, because we're late, right, they already have an amount due on their books here. So it increased from what was that? 288 G's to 316. Taxpayer called me kind of panicked when they saw this. They're like, Anthony, hey, um, I thought we responded to the IRS. What do I do? What do I do? I said, just hang on, hang on. We're fine. We still got some more time for them to process this thing. So essentially, you know, they could collect on this, but they weren't there yet with this notice, which was good. Um, but then you'll see, right, July, we got that. And then the very next month, we got 2018. Look at that. All these. So there was that 316, right? 316. And then they just did, voila, took them all off the books and essentially gave us a little bit of a refund, which was, I guess, kind of cool, right? Um, so there you go. That's it. This is, um, again, the timeline that happened. It took about seven months for us to get a response from when I sent it to w when we got an answer from the IRS. So in terms of, of the IRS, I guess that's not that, that's actually a pretty quick response in my eyes. Um, so there you go. I hope this was a helpful video. Again, if you need help with your case, feel free to use the link in the description below to schedule an appointment with me to discuss your case and see see exactly how I could help you out or you know, um, maybe I can help you help yourself. Hope the video was helpful. If it was, please hit that like button. 
Hit subscribe if you want some more of these videos in the future. Thank you so much.